This conference will now be recorded. Okay, hello and welcome to Summer Reading with Discus. Get ready to launch. Um, this year, uh, we, we do have the Universe of Stories theme and we have libraries across the state who are doing summer reading from with the, the itty bitties all the way up to adults. And um, hopefully today I will be able to point out to you some of the key resources that uh, you might want to integrate into some of your programming, your activities, uh, just to kind of keep the ball rolling. Um, you uh, may want to incorporate it into an activity or even create um, different types of puzzles and games related to these resources. So we do know um, about the, the benefits of summer reading for children and for teens, and as I mentioned before, even for your adults. So as we're going through the resources and looking at some of the options, uh, just keep in mind uh, different applications for Discus that, that you might not have thought about uh, before really in pulling it into your programming. Uh, these are some of the activities uh, that you may want to consider as you're continuing to build your programming. Um, it, we're getting really close, so most people already have the books and things in place that they're going to use. However, there are some sources here uh, that your patrons would be able to access from home as well and be able to continue, continue that. So you can uh, create tasks with point values to have uh, people come in to Discus databases, various Discus databases, watch videos, uh, answer questions, go to a tumble book, maybe complete a quiz, those kinds of things. You could create a bingo card that is Discus themed that uh, refers to your various uh, Discus databases as well. Um, some of you are planning to have your uh, participants read for a set period of time each day or read a certain number of books um, and others are uh, really mixing it up and doing different activities in addition to that for your participants to earn awards and prizes. Um, we do have, I wanted to point out, we, there is an Apollo 11 primary document um, that we have in Discus and there are, are several different ones for NASA as well. Um, just wanted to remind you that, that some of the original information about the space programs is also in Discus. And then we do have an Apollo 11 video that goes along with it. If you look at that sixth bullet down, the U.S. Mint Apollo 11 coin prize, um, this is something that you could actually order from the U.S. Mint. It's about $30. It is a commemorative coin that uh, actually has the the footprint of the on the moon on one side um, and uh, it would be a really nice final prize if you're doing um, a, a particularly challenging activity or something uh, to kind of culminate your program the last two bullets you'll see there the discus trivia spacewalk and discus challenge uh, these are um, little interactive uh, types of scavenger hunts that you could also integrate into your programming. Hello, Randy, and welcome. Um, you do have access to chat there, so if you uh, would like to add any um, questions, comments, uh, or, or other um, conversation, please feel free to use the, the chat there. Um, so Tumble Books Library is one of the first stops. Obviously, you'd want to look for um, for your, particularly for your story times. If you want to kind of mix up uh, the story times that are, are read uh, live versus those that are online, uh, there are several key books that I wanted to mention to you, just for you to have in your toolkit there that you could refer to. Um, this one is actually recounting Apollo 11's uh, mission to the moon, and you can see here that there are accompanying quizzes that go along with the book, so if you wanted to make an activity there, 
uh, that would be one thought, one idea that you can use. If you haven't used tumble books recently, you're going to find that the tumble books um, platform is moving away from the uh, Adobe Flash plugin since that one is kind of going going away um, so the look and feel of the books will be a little different but you're still going to have all of the key um, you know pieces the animation and the supplementary materials as you see here uh, with with the new the new look and feel of tumble books and we'll get into one of those in a moment so that you can see that um, this is another one, Faces of the Moon, uh, that is a good uh, read aloud book here, uh, just to kind of pull together the, the space topic and, and introduce children to a, a, another aspect of space. And uh, these are things that you can incorporate if you already have an activity um, where uh, you, you, know, you want them to do cutouts of the moon or you want them to do something, this would be a good supplementary book for that piece. Uh, Tumble Books also has the shuttle, which is a great uh, little read for second graders and on up. Um, and this one has, um, talks about the technology of the space shuttle and um, also has, if you'll notice there on the left, it also has the quiz. That's something that you don't want to forget about because, again, if you want to use this as an activity for points toward uh, part of the awards for your program, um, you can either print out the um, quiz or you can, uh, you can just print it out here and share it with them and have them submit it. Or you could uh, allow them to do the quiz online and then print out their answers. Um, this again uh, would be uh, something useful even if it's as a take-home piece uh, just so that they're con you know continuing to participate as long have a few different options to keep them to keep them interested and and participating um, tumble books space books also have um, a lot of on just the planets themselves and astronomy. There is a new one that's added that I wanted to mention to you there that you see at the bottom um, that um, it, it kind of talks more about the planet Earth and um, kind of has connections to different aspects of biology, geology, evolution, and other pieces. And this one is one of the newer ones. So you might have already seen some of the others. Uh, but those are also going to be um, good sources for you. I wanted to also mention there are chapter books in Tumble Books that have to do different with different space themes as well. Um, so you wouldn't want to forget those because your older readers were, would uh, be able to count one of these toward uh, their reading through the summer. And um, these also, as you can see here, this one also has the quiz piece that goes along with it. Uh, so this would be different aspects um, of the uh, um, reading levels for you to be able to explore in tumble books. And also, um, I wanted to mention there are over 10 uh, National Geographic videos in Tumble Books as well. So, do either of you currently use Tumble Books as far as um, creating uh, a playlist for any of your story times or having it set, preset, so that you don't have to look them up on the spot? Um, do either of you use that? You can respond in the chat there. Um, because um, that's a that's a nice easy way for you to be able to um, save a set time and you kind of have a good idea of how long each one of the books are going to take. Um, you can also search tumble books by tumble time if you haven't done that before uh, to kind of see the length of the videos uh, to see how much time that they would take to be shown. Um, so that's that's pretty much um, what you're going to find within Tumble Books is a variety of animated storybooks, chapter books, and videos that are related to space. Um, for those of you who have Credo Reference Center and have the public core 
Uh, the public core set has 63 of the DKI witness books. It has a collection there. Um, let's see, Christine says, I used the shuttle video during Lego. Oh, okay, on the anniversary of the, great, great. That's a good, that's a good um, way to incorporate that. Um, but with the DKI witness books, as you all know, these are the ones that check out and, and rarely come back uh, in a timely fashion. Um, which I suppose is good or bad, if, if, if it's the case they're actually being read and used. Um, but I wanted to point out the space exploration book in Credo Reference uh, specifically uh, because it has a lot of, as you know, great visuals uh, there. This is another one uh, that you could uh, incorporate with having a little quiz or having a, um, if you want them to uh, observe the book and then do a little challenge with it, do a little space challenge with the content. This is a very good uh, level for your middle readers. So that's a little bit more advanced than uh, obviously than your storybooks. And then I wanted to also turn your attention to Learn 360 and um, a lot of the uh, videos that are found here, you will be able to find a greater variety of ages. So if you are wanting to show something to a teenage level group, if you're wanting to, uh, you know, play something to incorporate it within, um, maybe you're doing an activity or a makerspace activity and you want to sort of pull all their attention together before you get started, getting out the glue and getting out the, the actual uh, pieces for the activity, uh, this is a good place to start also. So they're going to be those that are targeted to the young groups and you can sort those by the pre-K to age groups as you're searching. Um, you can also set up a playlist in Learn360. And again, this is just a time saver for you and your staff, the, your colleagues, uh, to be able to already have some of these um, videos in place. And, and ready to go um, when when you roll out your summer reading. Um, so that's something else that we'll show you here in the webinar. Notice too, uh, this one is a Magic School Bus one and where they're exploring the solar system. Um, we're finding, uh, whenever I travel throughout the state, we're finding that uh, People just love Magic School Bus of all ages because many of us knew them as we were younger as well and and our children and um, families. But um, it, it, they're just such appealing little videos that really uh, would be something that would be an asset to some of your programming there. And then we have the uh, the Reading Rainbow. This is something we you wouldn't want to forget also, there are some excellent uh, books related uh, that LeVar Burton, of course, reads uh, that will, will also be good for story times, possibly just to mix things up. So you have um, uh, the second one there, Alistair in Outer Space is on his way to return his library books and he's captured by a spaceship. So that one in particular uh, is a fun read that um, would be appropriate to incorporate into your summer reading program there. Then we also have articles and we're gonna go live into some of these, but there are a lot of great PDF articles that you can pull from Explora. We have Explora for elementary, middle and high levels uh, that you can search for that would pull things from Scholastic and other types of magazines. Uh, the nice thing about it is you're going to get a lot of the PDFs, so you're going to be able to see the magazine article as it was published. So if there are additional quizzes and pieces like that uh, for interaction that um, that you want to be able to draw from, those are all accessed from Explora from our website. Um, I know each public library has their own access points to each different database. But if you want to go out to studysc.org and pull Explorer that way, uh, you can if you don't currently have that on your youth services site. 
Um, but these are great because these are really peer-to-peer uh, -peer kinds of articles and some people are actually including the, the reading of articles into their summer reading piece, again, uh, to award points for that type of reading as well. So a mix of informational reading, nonfiction, fiction, uh, ebooks, etc. And this particular issue is one that I wanted to point out to you here in Child Art Magazine uh, that you see on the left. And uh, you can see the full contents in several articles. I'll go ahead and kind of pull, pull through here for you to see. This is one about space flight dolphin. And this is about the dolphin that went up into space that, uh, and how it was designed uh, there by the, this astronaut. Um, this kind of thing would be great if you're doing any kind of art sort of contests or art projects where you're wanting them to do space art. And you could tell them about uh, this, you could show them some of the really great images from it and and be able to sort of integrate real world NASA space program projects with um, art or drawing or painting that your uh, your group may be may be doing as well. Um, this is another one that came from Scholastic News actually in March, and this one is um, about uh, Catherine. Catherine, um, she was actually in the NASA space program, but um, this is a really great story about how she um, kind of came from a um, more like a poor background, but she continued to study her math and study and uh, then became an astronaut. And this is a, a very good informative article that also includes a lot of good images as well. So that's something that you might want to think of um, too as you're pulling together your program. You'll also know um, that in our um, Kids Info Bits, we do have a space and astronomy section. So that's where you're going to be able to pull videos, images, uh, book excerpts, and other information uh, that you can pull right into your Google Drive to have available um, and handy uh, as, you're, as you're working with some of these. And you can see here that um, you would just go into space and astronomy and you'd be able to browse all of those pieces. This is something that's good to, to share with the p parents as well, so that they know whenever they're going home, if they're, you know, if they want to continue to keep them reading and keep them engaged and interested, uh, that this is very easy for, for a child to navigate and be able to locate more information as well. Again, this is a, also another good opportunity uh, to include points for uh, summer reading uh, with some of these articles that are available. And then Britannica Library is another fantastic source for videos, um, also for images that are related to space. Um, this, uh, you can see this search here was just strictly on astronauts and I can go in and give you some more demos there. Um, but these, this is something else that they're gonna be able to access from home and um, you could actually have a, a handout uh, for them to take home um, if they can't, you know, be at, uh, at the library for all of their activities. Those, those kids that aren't able to attend every activity would still have an option to complete uh, different activities for other points. So that's something that people are doing more broadly now as well. Um, so that is just my uh, little canned uh, slides that I wanted to kind of give you a flavor for the kinds of things that you can find. And what I'd like to do next is go live into the databases and kind of show you different combinations and ways to find, um, find good sources. Um, Christina, is there something um, that you are working up currently for your program that you would like for um, me to focus on or to give a demo of? I think, uh, 
Yeah, I think your microphone is on as well. If you want to use the microphone, if not, you're welcome to um, you're welcome to just talk and chat down there. I'm going to escape out of this uh, canned webinar here and go back to my. Let's see if I can get through the rest of it here. And I'll just go back into my live discus search so that you'll be able to kind of see what we're doing there. So I know with your your own library, you again will have different access points for your logos, etc. But I'm just going to go into the um, Learn 360 one first to show you there. Whenever you go to the menu at the top left, you'll notice the drop down. A lot of times people um, don't realize this is here, but there are uh, just, it's a nice broad listing, very broad bird's eye view of what is found here just to save you as a library li librarian, library staff, to save you time to kind of see what is available in in the different broad subject headings that you can then narrow down even more. So for instance, if I go down to astronomy here under physical science, I can then um, go to my filters on the right and be able to filter out the grade levels that would be appropriate uh, for the different videos. Um, whichever one that you might be working with at the time. If it's teens, your 9th to 12th grade. Um, if it's the really young ones, you would have your pre-K 2 and 3rd th and to 5th grades there. You can limit by grade range, and you can also limit by subject. You'll notice there's space exploration and different aspects of space. So if you're having uh, them maybe create a... Um, you know, a space mobile, planets, that kind of thing, solar system, um, they might be interested in seeing that. So you can see a lot of these, uh, there are over 200 results here that uh, include something to do <coughs> with astronomy for those younger uh, ages. Um, this is the video we mentioned, why does an astronaut float in space earlier? Notice you do have some sharing options with these videos. Um, as I mentioned before, um, you can add it to your playlist. If you have created an account in Learn360, you can um, add some videos to the playlist. You can add interactives or any other uh, parts of, of the um, content in Learn360. We did add the Magic School Bus um, that ETV had provided, uh, and I think they still provide it on a separate website, but that's actually proprietary content that we've added um, also that you can then um, add to, I'm going to close this out real quickly here so we don't keep getting any any more of that. Um, you can see here that you can do an add to playlist here and you would just need to sign in to your user account. So you don't actually need an account to to pull up and use any of the resources directly, but you would need uh, the account if you are um, if you're going to do a playlist there. So uh, I'm just going to go up to the top here and um, scroll to the top quickly and show you where that uh, login is. You can create your own MyLearn360 account there. And let me see if I can shrink the controls so I can see what I'm doing here. So I'm just going to type in my uh, account that I've already created there and uh, do this. You can also tie it to a Google account so you can not have to remember yet another login. You can just log in directly with your Google account. But if I go through and select my pre-K through two level here that we had before and I want to pull that into a playlist, I can just do uh, the add to here. I can call, I can create a folder if I want to just create a summer reading folder. I can do that. 
just do a new folder here and type in summer reading 2019 create a new folder and you see it says item added um, so I can then um, so I've just added it to favorites notice that's what was highlighted there I would just choose playlist if I want to add the full title to playlist so down here I have an American Sign Language play playlist that I'm not really going to put it in but I do want to create a new playlist here so I can have favorites and a playlist for summer reading so that way um, if you just want to quickly pull something up in favorites you can do that uh, also when you have a playlist you can share it with others so if you wanted to share it with another staff member uh, you could do that as well so you can continue to add pieces such as that again so that you're not having to do like I'm doing and fumble around and find it all while the kids are waiting uh, for you um, on that piece so those are the things that you can um, do just to kind of save yourself time there um, you can also filter these by other as I mentioned before subjects uh, copyright dates if you only want the most recent um, videos you can also filter there as well the easiest way to get to the good read reading rainbow stuff or magic school but you can just do reading rainbow type that in and then add a word if you want astronauts if you want space um, I'll just do astronauts here as an example but um, you could just do a search there in general um, to be able to locate those that are, are going to be books that are read aloud um, there notice some of these are way off like the gift of the sacred dog this search is only keywords so they're they're searching as you know the keyword everywhere uh, rather than searching by subject but if you go to advanced search which is here at the top you can go to advanced search to search there as well and you can kind of limit your content types and be a little bit more specific about what you're looking for in that search did you have any questions um, Christine is there anything that um, you wanted to see particularly here or you had a question about okay Okay, I'm going to take you back to tumble books uh, briefly here. I did want to show you uh, kind of the difference uh, in tumble books with now that they're moving away from the flash piece. We can go up to tumble search here, and um, you, like I said before, you can search by tumble time if you uh, want a video that's really, really short, maybe just as an introduction to a, a summer reading program there. Um, you can search by title or by subject here and I'll just go with space as the example on this one this one is one of the chapter books that I mentioned and uh, that some of the videos like you had mentioned that you had used for your um, for your Lego activity so this one is still an Adobe flash player one you notice it's asking me to uh, enable it there so they do have some of the books that are still on the Adobe flash um, whoop, pardon me Let's see if I can try to mute that thing I hope it wasn't as loud for you as it was for me um, but so there, there are some that are still in that format but they are uh, migrating them over um, to be away from the uh, plugin so you won't have to worry about that um, so if we go back you can see here uh, let's see I'll just go back to storybooks as an example uh, to show you one there um, just go to Abigail here notice this looks a little bit different has a different look and feel but you still have all of the same ability to manually stop it and let the child read aloud or let the groups read aloud um, oh, okay thank you Christine um, the other um, piece that I wanted to show you within this is there is also uh, the ability to um, have 
a playlist here as well. Notice the purple playlist that you see here, those are going to be playlists that are already put together by Tumblebook staff themselves. So they've got different subjects. These are all you know, different minutes. Then they'll kind of go through different breakouts that they have for, for those subjects. But if you want to create your own, that's going to be done in the blue bar at the top. That's where you would uh, pull together your own playlist. So a lot of people don't know the difference between those two tabs, but that would, again, uh, uh, afford you the opportunity to sort of put everything uh, in one place that you would want to use for a program. And yeah, I think that's all we have there for Tumblebook Library. Um, I do want to jump over into let me see if I can close some of these down. I wanted to jump over into, um, I'm sorry, Britannica Library there. Again, just to remind you that there are a, a lot of excellent resources there as well uh, for uh, related to space exploration. So if you go into the children or young adults ones, particularly, you can go there and you can uh, type astronomy. Reach new heights, pave the way for future. There we go. Let me try to make that go away. So once you um, do a general search there, they do have the breakout of the different various types of videos, et cetera, that are there. See all images are here. And you would be able to, you know, look look up those, show those um, images. There are breakouts by levels. So if you have the same topic, but now you're wanting to move up the level to a middle school age or high school age, you can change that at the top with the scalable piece that is here as well. Um, this is really good if you have them doing a project. Um, I know that there is... Uh, the uh, Universe of Stories video project for the teenagers, um, if they are you know, looking for resources that they would want to incorporate into um, a, a project that they're creating, um, these, uh, these will have diagrams, images, and other pieces that, that are available here uh, within the Britannica library as well. Um, I did, uh, I did forget to mention, and I do want to pull up, um, Learn 360 one more time, because there is something that, uh, we have, uh, that we have in Learn 360 that a lot of people don't know about, and that is back to the main menu. Um, if you go down from the main menu down to browse other media there, um, if you continue to scroll down, you're going to see, oops, I think I have clicked on the wrong menu. Maybe it's just browse collections. That's probably where we need to be. So browse collections is where you're going to find below the custom videos, which are essentially our uh, Magic School Bus, are all of these web videos, and they're over 12,000. Again, the nice thing about this, you can access a lot of these just freely out on the web, but the nice thing about it being in this software is you're still going to be able to add to playlists and pull things in that way as well. And um, you're going to be able to see um, a lot of additional resources there. And let's see, producers... I wanted to check, I'm going back to browse collections again. Um, if you look at um, the, these uh, web videos, let's see if I can get back where I was. You will notice that you do not have the feature on the side to be able to filter by grade level. So if you are uh, viewing these and searching through these web videos, it's going to take a little bit longer for you to find um, something that that you want to use. Um, but uh, there there is just a great amount of videos there as well. Um, check. I'm just kind of going through each section of these quickly to see. 
So you can go by producers, the activities, and then, okay. So the MyLearn 360 is just going to take you back to your account so you can quickly and easily access your playlist, your favorites, and those that piece as well. So I have uh, created a handout, uh, Christine, that I will be emailing to you. Um, that was just another snapshot view. So if there is something maybe perhaps that, um, oh good, I'm, I'm glad that you were able to kind of get an overview of some of the, the resources that we've been building. Um, yeah, um, if you do want to just use that handout, perhaps you might be working one on one with a student during summer reading and, and be able to glance down at the handout and say, oh, yeah, we have this as well. So that would just be one more piece that that should be able to um, to help you uh, as you're working on your summer reading program. If you do you have any questions uh, about anything that I pulled up, maybe I kind of glossed over something and you were curious about. I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording and you are welcome to um okay great well just make sure that you do um give me shoot me an email or give me a call if if there is something that i can uh, support with you with if you just want to quickly say hey is there anything in discus for blah 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 i'll be glad to uh to communicate back with you and i hope that you um, have a very successful and enjoyable uh, summer reading. Thank you. Goodbye.